Hey, AP Gov guys, uh, Wallsware here. <laughs> um, hope you enjoyed our first uh, discussion regarding the uh, role of SCOTUS, the Supreme Court of the United States. Um, hope everything's going well. Hope things are. Uh, hope the family's good. Um, I sure miss school. Man, oh man, this stuff just seems to get, uh, starts to get you down. Uh, it's a lot better when it's really sunny. I'll tell you that much when I can get a workout and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, but damn, I never thought I would miss, uh, being dragged to a different field every day to, uh, coach little kids. Anyway, um, Let's let's talk a bit more, and and I want you to get your. Uh, the, I, I listed a bunch of court cases for you. I want you to uh, get really uh, to buckle down and do your due diligence regarding those court cases, um, and get those in, so that we are uh, maintaining our grades and keeping them super high. So when you graduate in uh, the spring or summer, uh, everybody's super proud of you. <laughs> anyway, um, let's talk a bit more uh, about the Supreme Court. Um, we got to the point where uh, we were talking about what it takes to keep the legal system of the United States flourishing. And uh, we have uh, 90 plus district courts that hear cases and write opinions uh, about those cases. These cases are constantly being monitored by individuals um, within the legal community. When, um, when a case comes, gets to the point where it is perceived by uh, the uh, district courts, that there may be a constitutional component under appeals that should be heard by the Supreme Court, okay? Um, and there are, by the way, there are thousands of cases that uh, are appealed to the Supreme Court every year, and they hear maybe, a, they hear a couple hundred of those. Um, and and as, I, as I mentioned, you know, in most cases, um, the justices will agree with the lower court decision and don't see any uh, need to uh, chime in on a given case. Um, but if uh, if the rule of a f uh, the rule of four comes to fruition, i.e., four of the Supreme Court justices in, re are required to say, "Hey." Uh, we should hear this case, well, then it's going to go to the Supreme Court. Now, what happens when it goes to the Supreme Court? Well, um, a lot of these cases um, can be sort of disposed, I don't want to say disposed of, but I guess um, they can be disposed of with something called brief orders. And um, essentially what a brief order is, is you return the case to the lower court because you have a related case that was recently decided that would also um, appeal to the case that was being deliberated in terms of would this be heard. So, you know, sometimes the, the you'll have this rule of four kicks in, these the Supreme Court justices, there's nine Supreme Court justices. Supreme Court justices may say, hey, um, let's get rid of that case using brief orders, and the brief orders are sent back to the lower court, and it says, hey, we just ruled on a case very similar to this. Here you go. Now, this happens when, for example, there's a um, a certain issue that's come up and is anticipated to come up quite a bit. Um, that's where you typically see something like this. And so the Supreme Court is hearing cases like this. There's not a lot of precedent set, but they're able to send brief orders back, which means they send, you know, I'll t kind of explain what a brief is. 
but they'll send this, this brief back to the lower court and say, all right, look, we kind of have this for you already. Um, so, uh, you know, if they take the case, okay, let's say they take the case, they're going to ask for a brief from both parties in the case. And, and um, you're going to have a brief presented and then you're going to have an oral argument presented. So the lawyers, the attorneys for um, the both the plaintiff and the defendant are going to be uh, actively trying to convince the Supreme Court justices that there is a constitutional basis for hearing their case and that they're and very very carefully they are going to try to convey the um, constitutionality that's that is either being um, ignored or is being um, inappropriately applied okay so the lawyers for both parties will prevent uh, will present these briefs and the um, the uh, the uh, Supreme Court justices will then uh, debate these briefs and talk about these briefs and then they will listen to the oral arguments okay um, and you can get uh, the briefs can come from quote unquote uh, friends of the court you know amicus curiae um, that are from other legal scholars that are designed to help the um, the uh, the justices kind of make a decision, and uh, the justices are now the wheels are kind of turning. They know the perspectives that are being offered by the parties within the case, and then the justices, uh, after hearing oral arguments and hearing briefs. They then sit down and they dive into these cases. Um, and they do this with uh, massive amounts of research and, uh, and, and then conferencing. Um, and one of the things that's really important in terms of the Supreme Court um, is they feel each other out. They try and they constantly are trying to gauge, hey, do you see something here? Uh, that I'm not seeing. What is your what is your particular take on this particular brief which we received? Do you think it's it's well? It's never groundless because if the Supreme Court is hearing a case, it it's when when I tell you that thousands of cases you know are uh, appealed to the Supreme Court um, every year and they only take a few hundred. That means that every case kind of has a pretty strong grounds if it's made it to the point where they are uh, researching and conferencing. But they're trying to figure out, well, look, how are we going to, how do you feel about this? Because remember, the Supreme Court, as I mentioned in the last discussion, tries to maintain a certain diversity of opinion. Most of these um, SCOTUS appointees are appointed by a president. Well, they're, they're all appointed by a president. Um, but they are appointed by a president that might be a Republican. We have others that are appointed by presidents that are Democrat. So, so when you're hearing a case, there are going to be different interpretations of the Constitution that are going to be going on between nine justices. So... That's where this conferencing and researching is very important. Now, once the Supreme Court is ready to um, come up with a decision, the individual justices will write an opinion. Okay, um, and the the majority, um, the I'm trying to think. Um, I know that the majority will write their opinion, okay? So it is assumed that the majority have one opinion, and that is the opinion that will be the rule of law going forward, okay? 
um, and this is a majority opinion. The justices in five justices at least have said that this is our take on this particular case. A concurring opinion is offered by a justice <clears throat> that is okay with the opinion, but not really the reasoning behind the opinion. But so let's say we have a six to three count, five of those might be majority opinion. Hey, we believe that this is uh, unconstitutional on the grounds that it denies X, uh, Y, yay. Another individual might say, I, I agree that this should be the rule of law. Okay? I agree with their opinion, but not with the way they got that decision. And that's a concurring opinion. That's not majority opinion. A dissenting opinion is given by the minority. And the minority, you know, one of the three, if it's a six to three decision, um, says, here is why I don't believe that X is unconstitutional, and that is known as a dissenting opinion. Dissenting opinions are important because going forward, a dissenting opinion kind of outlines, hey, where could the future of this issue go? Okay. And, and it... Um, it, it's it's important for a um, for all sides to be heard. Okay? It's very important for all sides to be heard in this process. So um, this brings up the question of uh, judi ju uh, judicial activism. Um, I can't find my coffee. Um, sorry. Uh, hold on. Sorry. Uh, anyway, kids, I'll get through this without my coffee. This brings up the question of uh, judicial activism. And, uh, you know, the, the majority opinion is an opinion that is based on obviously the majority of the representatives in the Supreme Court, okay? That, that majority may be a conservative majority, okay? So if you have only four Democrats or democratically appointed justices and five hardline conservative Republican uh, appointed justices, the dissenting opinions are going to be important um, because it's going to demonstrate the volatility of the decision. Okay? And a great example of this is the Roe versus Wade case, okay? because we have dissenting opinions in this. And um, I know you guys have done some research on that and it's a privacy, you know, the privacy component, but that, um, you know, cases like that, that are sort of the, they are, they're, they're just really complex cases and dissenting opinions are very important in that case. And judicial activism um, is this idea that the Supreme Court should play an active role in public policy. Okay? So what is that active role? Well, one, it is uh, overturn laws uh, seen as unconstitutional. Uh, whether it's Brown versus Board of Education overturning Plessy v. Ferguson, okay? as segregation being unconstitutional or something simpler. This is public policy. And, and um, you know, when you, when you have something like the Warren Court and you have the, um, the Brown versus Board of Education decision, um, you see that this is judicial activism. This is, this is 
despite the fact that there was precedent set regarding separate facilities, the, the, the Warren court says, no, this is, this is um, I am going to overturn that, that uh, law because it is unconstitutional. Separate is not equal. <clears throat> they are overturning precedent, which is very difficult to do in terms of the Supreme Court of the United States because precedent is so important. Um, and uh, this is, you know, so how do you, how do you, uh, what makes you a, a judicial activist? Well, you overturn something that you see as unconstitutional, despite the fact that there's a precedent for it. Um, and you are often going against a previous court's opinion. Now, this can happen. America changes. So the Supreme Court has to gauge where America is at a given time. Okay? So th these are some of the these are some of the really important issues that uh, are constantly coming up. Um, you know, if we we look at something like um, uh, the uh, Warren Court, and I, I'm going to have you know we'll look at the different courts: the Warren, the Berger, the Rehnquist courts, um, as as um, the difference between liberal and conservative courts and that, that judicial activism element. So um, anyway, uh, take a look. Uh, I, I, um, let's see, I need to uh, give you some kind of an assignment going forward. I will get on with this. I will give you with this video will be a another amazing assignment for you to add to the court cases assignment. Anyway, guys, um, I, I love you all. I, I hope you're doing well and uh, keep fighting the good fight. Uh, God bless to all your families.